G'day and welcome to episode 94 and our final for Greece. In the last episode, we survived the storm, left the coast and headed inland to check out some really old bridges. In this episode, we cross into Albania, check out the Blue Eye and head to Girocaster. So before going into Vicus itself, we've come to a lookout to check out Vicus Gorge, which is, uh, it actually has the world record for being the deepest gorge in the world at 900 metres, though it is in uh, relation to the overall width of it, but 900 metres is just crazy. So yeah, it's about a hundred metre walk up a really, really easy path from the car park. We have brought our spray jackets though, just because it has been on and off like torrential rain all day. So yeah, we just didn't want to <laughs> have a bit of a shower while we're out. Um, but yeah, I've just arrived at the gorge now and it is absolutely gorgeous. Yep. double rainbow has just come out. That is one of the most incredible things I think I've ever seen. Is this for a camp spot? That view. Yeah. Pretty happy about that. So we were just up this gorge earlier at the lookout up there. So yeah, this is awesome. So it's been a little bit of a cloudy, really, really cloudy, and then also really sunny morning this morning. It's actually just kind of clearing up now. Yeah, uh, yeah again, <laughs> um, but pretty nice view to wake up to. And yeah, last night we thought it was gonna stay clear for the night, but it rained all night long again, which is fine. But then yeah, it was like super windy and it was just like being hammered into the side of the tent. Anyway, we had a little bit of a sleep in this morning. So we actually found this place because there's, on Google, there's like a lookout walk just down here. So we're gonna go and check that out now. Um, but yeah, pretty awesome place to camp. It actually looks like there's been other people camping here. There's a couple of fireplaces scattered around, but really quite not 
Quite we, no, I mean like, I mean we didn't, we didn't have any visitors. <laughs> um, it's a bit delusional this morning. A bit ambitious, probably is a better way to say it. <laughs> this, when we woke up, the clouds lifted, and it was just glorious sunshine. You haven't put your shorts on. I had shorts and a shirt on. Um, that ambition quickly died. Who's delusional now? Yeah. Anyway, look at this blue sky here. You never know. So anyway, we're gonna go and have a look at this lookout um, and then we're gonna go for a drive um, a little bit further towards the village and then just on the other side of it, there's some man-made like swimming rock holes. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be going swimming, but I wanna have a look. And then we're gonna head towards the Albanian border, so it's not too far from here. I also forgot to say that um, this morning when the clouds lifted, there's a peak which is behind the clouds now, but it was covered in snow, so yeah, it got a little bit chilly last night. I think I'm going to be sleeping from, with socks on from now on. Were you cold? No. Uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> this is the lookout and the view is absolutely incredible. These mountains are so dramatic. This is such a great spot. There's actually amazing hiking in this region. I'd love to be able to stay for a week or so and be able to explore all the different trails, but we're sort of doing express version. But yeah, we thought it was going to rain as we we're walking here. It was a big grey cloud following us, but it's cleared off and the lighting is just perfect. We're only about like a kilometre and a half down the road from where Rock. we camped last night. Stacked. Rock stack. Um, and then yes, yeah, so it's just a short walk down to check them out. It's a beautiful day now. So this is the, where the pools would normally be. There's a really unusual rock formation across the here. But what they, I think they, they put a gate here and block them up, dam them in the summertime. That'd be incredible in the summer. I imagine there's a lot of people that actually come here too, which might take away from it, but the rocks are beautiful. Yeah. It's also not very warm. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we'll be jumping into that. side of the border and um, now we're just waiting at that Albanian side to go in but there's a big cross, um, cross big bus load of people in front of us but the customs guy on the Greek side was so friendly he like was just really pleased that we came and visited Greece and then he even gave us a big pomegranate as a present <laughs> yeah, from, he, from Greece anyway thank you for the big pomegranate um, and the immigration guy, hang on, guy like we had to wait we'll, to get through because there was a bus there as well and the immigration guy just walked up next to the car. The guy who just checked our passports came out of his little office with his phone and showed us him watching the vi our videos. <laughs> I felt really bad though because there was a massive line of people um, behind us and we were kind of holding them up because we wanted to have a, have a bit of a yarn with us. Um, but yeah, I think we're moving now, so it's good. We just left the border crossing and the Albanian side took all of two minutes, which was really good. We just drove up to the one window and just gave him our passports and the car documents and yeah, then we were good to go. So now we are driving the first bit of Albania. It's an absolutely stunning valley. And we're not driving too far actually. We're only going um, about 25 kilometers to a place called the Blue Eye, which is a natural spring. I think it might be a little bit cold to go for a swim, but anyway, we're gonna camp there tonight. And yeah.
So we've arrived and well and truly settled into sitting next to the blue hole. <laughs> this is the water flying out of the blue hole and it is unbelievably crystal clear. Yeah. It's super touristy. We got here, what time? Like five? Um, five? Yep. Close to five. Um, there's still a lot of a few people here and at kind of overlanders. Then we counted like seven just at the front gate, parked up, camping there. Yeah, so we've just brought our chairs out, having a little picnic. And there's these really cute little birds <coughs> that are just hanging around um, on like the twigs and stuff, and they like puff themselves up a lot. They're only like this big. Pretty cute. Lots of wildlife. Yeah. Lots of little tiny frogs. But yeah, I think it'll be a pretty quiet night here tonight, which is good. I'm looking forward to a solid sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly 18,500 litres of water pump up from the depths every second, making swim against this flow not too easy. In hindsight, some fins and a weight belt probably would have helped. Whoa. Cold? Oh, it's cold. Nevertheless, taking the plunge into 10 degree water was a refreshing start to the day, and as I thought out, we hit the road north and back over the mountains. So we made it to Girocaster and we are in our second campground of the whole trip. It's been good with this weather um, to come to places like this. There's no sun, uh, we can tap into power and we can get some stuff done. And it costs about 10 euro and it's pretty close to town. Town's only over this way, I mean only under 2Ks which is handy. We've got our Chinese laundry set up here, we've done our first load of washing, we've got another couple to go. Um, got some wildlife as well, wildlife. <laughs> farm animals. Uh, the other th good thing about coming to places like this is to get stuff done. Uh, having a down day means we can get some stuff done on the trippy. This table, and I've tapped on about it before, but it's been an absolute pain in the ass. This is the front runner drop down table. I don't know whether we just got a bad one or other people have experienced this as well, but these cable stays, it's just it's a horrible design um, from an R&D perspective. Um, they just snap from folding it up and putting it down again. It just creates too much tension on the cable and ends up snapping. I, I've resorted, because this is all I could get in some countries, was using just a, I think a two mil fencing wire and twisting those together and just putting and making that work. But um, when we're in Kaj in um, south, southern Turkey, I actually went to the Chandlery and bought this stainless cable. So hopefully this is a bit more um, sturdy than this method. Rated the electrical kit and got some dissuasion tool and some of those um, parts out as well. So I'm gonna change that over now and hopefully that lasts to the end of the trip but I mean I, I love this table and this has been our kitchen for years so that's why I keep persisting with it but I mean I'd love to see a revision to this model with something more rigid here and no cable stays. So that's all done. Looks a million times better than the, the bush job I did with the fencing wire. So hopefully that I mean that should last till the end of the trip so we can find a, an alternative. I rated the bits and pieces container. I would recommend anybody who's doing long distance overlanding to have containers like this which is just mixed screws and washers and stuff. And I've got another one in there which is full of bolts and, and nuts and stuff like that which it just really comes in handy when you need to fix stuff. Because finding different threads and stuff on when you're traveling in certain countries just isn't really easy so yeah. So I'm going to move on to the next stuff now and take a few things off the list. Looks good though, thanks for that. So we've packed up at the campground and have come for a drive into the old town of Jiricasta and it is a very quaint part of town. It is absolutely stunning. It's very romantic. Jiricasta is actually a uh, UNESCO World Heritage listed city. So we can leave without coming for a visit. There's a castle up the top of the hill which we're going to check out. And there's a tunnel which we're going to go to first from the Cold War. Down that way. Past the big Vodafone building. And we might buy a rug for the troopy. Because yeah. <laughs> one of the problems at the moment is it's getting quite cold. Uh, last night it was freezing. And the floor, although it's insulated, the floor still gets very cold. So I think we maybe put a nice traditional rug down. 
little treat for Troopy. Yep. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to keep walking this way now and go and check out the tunnel. Through this unassuming gate is one of the three entrances to the huge network of tunnels that make up this Cold War bunker. The bunker was built in secret in the 60s as an emergency shelter from nuclear attack. The then country's paranoid dictator thought this was imminent after they broke from the Soviet Union. The bunker itself is 800 metres long, has 59 rooms and was completely self-sufficient, including power, water and air, to allow a fully functioning government to operate for up to three months. Most of the original fixtures were looted after the tunnel was exposed, though some pieces still remain. The bunker remained a secret up until the fall of the Soviet Union in the early 90s, at which time there was huge public backlash at how the then government had built and run the bunker right under their noses. I guess it's easy to keep secrets in a dictatorship. Above the bunker is the Girocaster Castle, which sits in a commanding location over the surrounding town. Originally built in the 12th century, the castle was continually added to and renovated over hundreds of years by different ruling parties. Its last use was as a prison, converted by Zog, King of the Albanians, in the 1930s for political prisoners and was used up until the 60s. It now serves as a historical site, arms museum and concert area with an epic view over the town and river valley. That's it for this episode and our time in Juricaster. If you'd like to see more episodes, head over to our Patreon page through the P logo on the screen now. Alternatively, check out our Instagram and Facebook to see more pictures. Join us in the next one where we hike to a hot spring and start to explore the mountains. Thanks for watching. See ya!